Welcome to Rising Stars, where Miriam Knight, publisher of New Consciousness Review, interviews exciting new voices in the world of progressive and transformational books, films, and ideas who offer intriguing perspectives on life, the universe, and everything in between. Join us as we celebrate the conscious awakening and explore many expressions of consciousness in action. Everyone and welcome to the Rising Stars show. I'm Miriam Knight and here on Rising Stars, we celebrate some of the best transformational writers you may not have heard about yet, but I'm sure you will be hearing more from in the future. I will be introducing you to two or three of these authors per show, and I think you'll find their perspectives intriguing, and they just might add a few more pieces to the puzzle of who we are and all we can become. I'm delighted to welcome my first guest today, Beth Banning. Now, Beth is a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and spiritual catalyst who has written numerous books, including the Meditation for Life series and her newly released book, Interviewed by God. She has also co-created the Pathway to Personal Freedom and the Art of Conscious Connection seminar series. After many years of integrating this consciousness-shifting work into her own life and teaching it to others, she experienced a profound reconnection with God that turned her life upside down. This radically changed the way she perceives the world and functions in it. Beth now lives her life guided by her inner source of divine wisdom. She's committed to helping others discover this for themselves. And I am delighted to welcome you, Beth. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Beth, this is such a fascinating story and and your book, Interviewed by God. Tell me a little bit about how you came to write this book. What's your background? Um, I guess the first thing, well, first of all, I just wanted to thank you. I just think this is such a wonderful thing you're doing and the forum you are offering to um, new authors. So I just love that. I just wanted to honor you and, and thank you for that. So oh, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. And um, I, I, I think um, just to answer your question, how I went about uh, why did I write this book? I, the first thing I'd like everybody to know is that I'm really quite ordinary. So um, I didn't, I don't have a higher degree uh, in education. I come from a kind of really lower middle class family. There was nothing spectacular or, or um, different from my childhood than probably everybody that's listening, you know. So it was quite a shock to me when, um, when this whole thing happened in my life and how it all was stimulated. I was never much of a spiritual seeker growing up. My, we didn't have re really religion in my family. Kind of, uh, my mom was, there's some kind of higher source and really our religion is being decent human beings. That was her thing. Mm -hmm. So um, I was really open, but uh, it, it was never something that was important to me, you know, was, uh, being a seeker. So when this whole thing happened, it was quite shocking. Um, I was more of a personal growth kind of gal, you know, so it was more intellectual, more cognitive work. My husband and I uh, did relationship and communication seminars for years. And um, my mom got sick is really how this whole thing happened. And I... Uh, I've been an entrepreneur my whole life, you know, three generations of entrepreneurs. So I had a, a, a fluid life and I was able to take my mom in, which I was very grateful for at the time. But it just changed, my, like I didn't have enough time to do all the things. An entrepreneur, you know, we work, you probably know, we work harder than any boss can get us working. <laughs> so it, so I worked all the time and, uh, you know, my mom came in and I started having to care for her and, you know, bring her to the bathroom and all these really like day to day nitty gritty caregiving kinds of things. And, you know, I know so many people that have these kinds of awakenings had this like intense thing that had to happen to have it open up. And really this was my it was a 
it was a time when I had to reevaluate, you know, and I guess that happens with people, but it, you know, usually it's much more dramatic. This was, this was my mom and she moved in with me and I had to care for her. So, um, it just changed everything. I couldn't work as hard. I couldn't do the things I was doing and, and things just started to open up and my perspective of life started changing. So that's really how the book came to be, um, the title came because when I was asked to write the book, like in my intro that you um, did so beautifully, um, I, you know, had written lots of blogs and books and things like that, but I had never written anything that was particularly about me. So when I was asked to write this, guided to, to write this, it was very challenging and very difficult. And I was like, what do you want from me if it's not going to be easy? Because by then I was really living my life guided. And oh, Okay, okay. You, you've, you've made this kind of skip between taking your mom in and then having guidance, which I can only assume is from higher sources. Mm -hmm. So how did that little <laughs> trend, <laughs> how did I you get from A to B? <laughs> Uh, you know, it, that that actually is my book. So it's so hard. Let me see if I can do that. Um, you know, one day I, I, you know, so many of us think that a spiritual awakening is going to be this profound shift in the way we live our lives and this, I mean, like, it is profound, but I, it's the chop wood and, you know, mm -hmm. carry, you know, water. Carry water. So, yeah. Right. Uh, so uh, one day I was in the bathtub and I... I just got what we are all about. Um, there was a, most of my life I spent, and most of us can relate to this, there was this underlying anxiety. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was just always there. It was the air I breathed. It was how I lived my life. It was, it's it modern was life. Yeah. Right. It was normal, you know, so I didn't think much of it. But this day, um, this day, I, I, it just happened. I, I, I don't know how to explain that. You know, you're asking for that very moment, uh, you know, how I went from caring my mother to this way of living. Well, and I, I have to, is, is I, just that, you know, it, it can happen, you know, just like that. And it did. Is, and it I, did. And I explain it all in my book. Yeah, so, right. so if you want the details, I'll send now, you over to the book. But it, it's just so interesting that you, you say that you're, you know, just a normal gal and nothing special. And, and this happened. This is happening everywhere. And part of the reason that that I do what I do is to impress upon the listeners, upon the world at large, that we all have this ability to connect. So t tell me about how the, the, what the impact of this uh, connection has been on, on your life. Well, that, that's kind of what I was saying is that I really, I really walked around with this kind of underlying tension and now it's gone. So, um, the impact has been a, like, I didn't know what relaxed meant until this happened. I didn't know that life could be as easy as it is. I didn't know that I didn't have to work so hard or strive for anything that I could just be in every moment and life would just flow so beautifully. I mean, I live in, in a beautiful home and I have an ocean view. And, but those aren't even things that I strived for at this point. It's just they kept – they just come to me. So really the impact is living a life that just flows. And it, you know, even in those times, like it's not that nothing like quote unquote bad happens. But when it does, like I was living um, in this beautiful home and we're renting and my uh, landlord sold the house. So we had to leave and I was like, okay, well, I wonder where we'll end up next. And when I kind of, you know, put out, I 
really want to live in something like this because we love it so much. We kind of live our vacations, do you know, on a day to day basis. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, we really want something like this. And it turns out with, you know, without all the drama about it that used to be or the upset or the worry I wouldn't find something, I just allowed and, and I have a very direct communication with God. Uh, you know, I call it God, but whatever people call that higher source. And I asked, you know, so what is there for me to do? And very clearly I got, there's nothing for you to do. It's being handled. So, you know, on occasion I would look on Craigslist and, you know, I just relaxed into it. It turns out we moved two doors over in almost the identical house. Hmm. You know, it just came up for rent. It all worked out perfectly. I, you know, so, so the impact was peace was a joy and a contentment that honestly I didn't know was possible. And what was the biggest thing that you had to do to actually accept this? <laughs> well, the biggest thing is continuing because it's there doubt still pops up in my mind. So what I have done and what I continue to do is remember that I am that. I am that which I seek, that I don't have to look outside of myself for anything, for everything that I'm looking for. So that's all I have to do is keep reminding myself. Well, this is the uh, sort of an encapsulation of the wisdom of, of the great wisdom teachers. Um, and it is interesting that you came to it kind of spontaneously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one of the things that's really fun is that mm -hmm. I believe that if we all relax enough, I think that's all it takes. I mean, we are all connected. It's just we've got so many layers of cultural crap that have covered the knowing of that connection. And that if we just are able to relax enough, we fall into God. Yeah. Ah, well, we are speaking with Beth Banning, and we are going to be right back after these messages. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Medium Lisa Phoenix, Mediumship Messages and Musings, explores mediumship and all things metaphysical. Lisa Phoenix invites you to reach above and beyond your everyday experiences to explore new dimensions in the spirit world. She will do live readings to connect callers to their loved ones in spirit, shares engaging stories and teachings from her own personal experience, and will have intriguing conversations with other mediums, spiritual teachers, and healers to help you understand the metaphysical world so you can connect to these forces in your day-to-day -day life. Join your host on this magical and metaphysical journey into the world of spirit every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Radio Namaste leads you down the yellow brick road into portals of consciousness with the blue-collar goddess as your host. Interviews with humans who could be famous or just popular, and answers to everything are on the agenda. Tune into Om Times Radio and drop in on Thursdays at 3 Eastern. It's a different brand of enlightenment. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. And we are back with our guest, Beth Banning, who 
authored the book Interviewed by God. Beth, what do you think keeps people from trusting their intuition? I, I think that's really one of the biggest barriers that we have to overcome. Um, um, so um, I really believe that the first thing that keeps us from trusting is that we don't believe that we're connected, that we um, also, I believe that there is a difference between intuition and internal guidance. They work really well together, but I think people kind of confuse those two things. And when people get really connected with their internal guidance, their intuition um, is clearer and they can tell when it's like working and when it's not. So one of the things with internal guidance is that it's all physical sensations. Uh, you know, an intuition has a lot of the, you can have a lot of visual and you can have a lot of um, uh, just kind of knowings and you can have all kinds of other things. But when we get really connected with our physical sensations, those things that are inherent within us that that we came to this planet with as our guidance system that we're really disconnected with, I think that we can begin to trust uh, these larger knowings more, um, more often. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is, when we aren't fully connected, we don't know, we, we don't believe that it is our intuition. It's really what keeps us from trusting it. Um, the thing that I see people do often that keeps them moving in uh, and trusting their guidance is a commitment to it. That's one thing that has helped me immensely is committing to following it. And again, knowing that there is no bad choice. I think that's one of the other really big things that keeps people. <laughs> I think a lot of people you know, might dispute that. <laughs> I understand. And that, and that's really one of the, um, it's one of the illusions really of, of life is that because it doesn't work out the way you think it was meant to happen, like the good, um, the good outcomes is that somehow your intuition is bad. And this is a huge piece because we don't have the whole picture as the very limited incarnated beings that we are right now. I think a lot of people have had the experience that uh, something went terribly wrong and they went into a funk and then they discovered later on that that was the exactly. best thing that could possibly have happened to them. Exactly. Like getting fired or getting divorced or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Like I could have said, you know, my, my landlord selling this fabulous house was the worst thing that ever happened to me. And I could have, you know, suffered that whole time mm -hmm. rather than, you know, going, okay, there's mm -hmm. something bigger here that I probably don't know about. We don't know who we touch. We don't know what... Um, the, the outcome of things in, in past our view is going to be. And the other thing um, is that even in, even in the moment, people think, let me, let me back up a little bit. I check in, you know, sometimes moment to moment. Because this is the other piece, is guidance changes. We think, so many of us think that, or, and I did, that if I got some guidance, it will be that guidance all the way to the outcome. And really the truth that I'm finding for myself is that guidance changes moment to moment. And the reason is because guidance is just energy in, mo like what, what your guidance is, is following the energy, but energy changes so as you move, as a thought changes, as someone else's thought change, the guidance will change. So sometimes if it's not quite feeling like the same, I check in again and the guidance would have changed. Hmm. Does that make sense? Like Very interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. Do you have any tips for people to actually establish or, or maintain this spiritual connection? Um, my favorite, there's lots of ways. Again, we are so, so all individual. My favorite is called active imagination, which is a, um, a, a, came from a Jungian process of actually 
talking to yourself, more or less. I, I do it in writing, and I write my name, then I write colon, then I ask a question, then I write God, or whatever you want to call it, and then I, I let the answer flow through me. So this is how I established a, a kind of day-to-day, like, um, information, wisdom, gathering, like, in writing connection. And, it, you know, this works for about 80% of the people. And um, I actually have on my website a, a free gift that kind of outlines the whole thing in my first conversation. Because one of the things I am passionate about is that everybody gets that we're already connected. You just have to find your, like, what works for you in, in, in establishing that connection. But that's one of my favorite ways. I think that um, that is called automatic writing. It's a little bit different than automatic writing because automatic writing is, uh, in my understanding, um, is just a flow of consciousness. I don't know if that's what you know it as. Well, no, actually, I was introduced to it through Ruth Montgomery's books. And, uh, you know, it, it was certainly a two-way dialogue. Oh, interesting. Cause yeah. the the automatic writing I know of is just a flow of consciousness and there's no questioning and, and none of that. So, you know, it's so funny. We all call these things different mm-hmm. things. <laughs> but, but it's also important to point out that different people process energy in different ways. Some people are auditory, so they will be clairaudient. Some people will be clairvoyant. They will see images. And other people are kinesthetic where the, you, you actually feel the impulse to move the paper the pencil on the paper mm-hmm. and, I, and then there's another one too what is the one that you just are know you just clear clear sentient, sentient. yeah mm-hmm. and i actually that's more my um my kind of everyday way of knowing mm-hmm. but this other thing i you know to try some other things out too because i never would have actually thought this would work for me because i i'm not a, an actual physical writer like like I, on paper mm-hmm and this just, it works so great for me. So, yeah. Oh, well, certainly something to try out. And what would you tell people who want to feel peaceful and be happy and are longing for this spiritual connection? The first thing, the first thing I would say is that you already have the connection, you know, that we're striving for something we already have is this funny um, mm, confusion or dichotomy or something. It's to really like commit, to, like not commit to it, but like, like say it at least. I have this commit connection. How do I, um, feel it how do i know it rather than how do i find it you know mm-hmm. i really think it's one of the first steps sort of claiming it exactly mm-hmm. and what if they they don't i mean how did you come to integrate these spiritual experiences into your life was was it a process was it uh, overnight um the you know again the awakening kind of was a spontaneous thing where i just knew these things, like I knew what I knew, you know, I knew I was connected to everything. I've had um, what I'm coming to call, um, I read it somewhere and I went, oh my gosh, that is such a good description of, of what I have experienced, which is living presence. There, you know, these, the sensations that I am connected to everything. And those are experiences, but those aren't my day-to-day life. So really it's a practice. It's a um, a commitment to staying connected, to knowing I am connected, to to allowing for that presence to be part of my life. It's a, it's a practice of embodiment, is what I'm um, knowing it as at this point, and it's embodying that spiritual knowing, that spiritual wisdom, that spiritual connection with my everyday life, which is, it is the heaven on earth that, you know, is possible for us. It's that um, experience, you know, we're here to experience, not to, not to, um, you know, 
get some goals. Like goals are wonderful because you can throw them out in the fu- in, into the future and kind of go towards them. But again, it's like, you know, the journey is what we're here for. It's those the journey day-to-day. is the journey. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's mm-hmm. what we're here for. So yeah. if we don't start loving mm-hmm. that and experiencing it, then, you know, it's kind of not going to be the satisfying life that you're looking for. What do you hope that people will get out of reading your book? The biggest thing is that they are that, you know, they are what they are looking for. There's nothing outside of them that is going to give them what they're looking for. They have it inside of them. So that's more than anything. That's what I hope for. You know, that's such a profound uh, point because people are always looking for happiness outside. They're looking for success outside. And it's keeping it away from them because they always um, are perpetuating this state of lack in in their lives instead of of um, doing what you called creative imagination and feeling into the the energy of positivity, the energy of what they really want. So I. I warmly uh, commend that piece of advice. Tell me, Beth, what is your website? How do people find out more? It's easy because it's my name. So it's Beth at BethBanning.com. And that's B-A-N-N-I-N-G? That's right. So it's B-E-T-H-B-A-N-N-I-N-G.com. That's right. So it's BethBanning.com. I always do that. I give you my, that's my email address, Beth at BethBanning. So it's BethBanning.com. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, Beth, that's, that's such a fascinating book and a fascinating premise. Um, interviewed by God. I, I would say you're also interviewing God as you ask God, God questions. As well, yeah. God <laughs> asks me questions. I ask God questions. We, we have a conversation. So there you go. Uh, well, somebody already wrote that book. He's called the, the Neil Donald Walsh. With God, exactly. <laughs> I know. It was funny when this title came up because really, uh, you know, God asked me questions to get me to write the book is really how the book was written with questions from God. So that's how it was, why it was titled that. Interviewed by God by Beth Banning. Beth, thank you so much for being with us. It was a pleasure. And please stay with us because we will be back with our next guest. Uh, See you in a bit. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Time to read that inspiring book or that blog post you've been meaning to get to? In your busy world, how do you improve yourself and keep your life going? I'm Lisa Kay, and my Between Heaven and Earth radio show can transform your life just by listening. Be uplifted with inspiring topics, positive stories, and ideas that really work. Between Heaven and Earth radio is conscious living for your soul every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Simone Millicis would like you to know that business can be fun, which is why she wrote the book, Joy of Business. What if you could have the joy of business rather than the stress and struggle? Most of the time, the only thing stopping you from a thriving business is you. In the Joy of Business book, Simone gives you access consciousness tools and pragmatic ways to get out of your own way and to create the business, life, and living you know is possible and beyond what this reality says is achievable. Business is joy. It's creation. It's generative. It can be the adventure of living. You can purchase your copy of the book through Amazon or Joy of Business website, www.accessjoyofbusiness.com. Hi, this is Angela Levesque, host of Entanglement Radio. Join me Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern for inspiring conversations with visionaries in spiritual science and conscious healing. Entanglement Radio, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern. Transcendent Talk 
for the conscious mind. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. We are back. I'm Miriam Knight, and I'm speaking with Pollyanna Blanco. Polly's soul loves dancing through life. She desires to guide people in discovering how truly multidimensional they are as they pursue their creative journey, courageously embracing the soul's call to rediscover deep inner truth and joy. She is an author and a licensed chakra dance facilitator, which I will have to learn more about, a Reiki master and divine connections practitioner, and she's been an educator for over 18 years. She has studied ballet, modern flamenco, and ballroom dance, and in 2013, she was named the North American Imperial Pro-Am Show Dance Champion, representing the Spring Tulip Classic in the 2013 Best of the Best at the Ohio Star Ball. Anyway, her groundbreaking new book is called In Rhythm with Your Soul, Break Through the Barriers to Being Creative, Face Your Demons, and Dance. That sounds like a call to action if I've ever heard one. Welcome, Polly. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, Polly. Now, this is your first book. What inspired you to write it? Well, thank you for asking that question, Miriam. There isn't just one single thing that inspired me to write it. It was really uh, the cumulative process of a number of different aspects, nourishing and feeding the inspiration for it. For example, um, one thing in particular was this passion that I have for dance. Um, And when I talk about passion, the first thing probably that comes to one's mind is this idea of earthly passion. Really and truly, in its essence, it's it was connected to the divine passion, a passion uh, for connecting to something much greater than just the physical realm, always wanting to touch that through dance, and the very human roller coaster ride and ups and the ups and downs that one encounters in reaching for that carrot, that proverbial carrot. <laughs> so, really, in 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 its truest form, what inspired me to write this book um, was to help other people who felt that same calling to really go for it and and just, you know, understand that the bumps along the way are actually um, fertilizer for the soul. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, I think that the the creative aspects that you 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 describe, whether it's um, art or dance, um, those are the source of joy in our lives. And what you're urging people to do and hopefully showing people to do is to break through the barriers that we have. Tell, tell us more about your book. Who did you write it for? Well, I, I wrote it for the person who I've met in myself um, over the years and the person uh, that I've met on the street. Um, I think all of us have an aspect of self that longs to pursue something. And then we talk ourselves um, into it and then talk ourselves out to it just as quickly. And so I really wanted to write a book that would address the emotional, mental, and spiritual dimensions of a very physical pursuit. There are so many great books out there that delve into the technical aspects and the styling and the technique, which are very supportive and, and, and very wonderful. At the same time, I felt like there was really a need to support people in those other dimensions so that in the wee hours of the morning, when you're thinking, should I go back and take that next dance class? Or, you know, am I going to pick up that paintbrush again? That there would be this sort of security blanket, uh, this um coffee table confidant, if you will, (laughs) that one could turn to and look themselves up and say, hey, I'm not alone. Yeah, yeah. Well, what what do you think was the most challenging aspect of writing your book? Uh, (laughs) I I, I chuckle because um, the very same process that I went through in writing the book is the process that I'm trying to support people um, through in their own journeys. And that is the stopping and starting, stopping and starting journey. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And because working full time um, as as a teacher, 
amongst many other pursuits. Um, in the beginning, I, I had this inkling that there was a book inside of me for a very long time. Ever since I was quite small, my mother, who's also a poet and a writer, very much encouraged my brother and I to write. And uh, so I knew that there was a book inside of me. And I remember the very first, when I finally, dis- and I dabbled, I'd written a poem and published a poem here and there in an article. But when I finally um, got really clear with myself that, no, I, I need to do it. I need to honor this. I remember sitting down and writing down, I have no idea what this book is about, but I know that there's a book inside of me and I just need to get started. And then I looked at it and of course, all those inner demons got swirled up inside of me, the inner critic and everything. And I literally crumpled it up into a ball and tossed it in the direction of my cat to play with. (laughs) So what I learned through the process was this whole idea of, um, you know, sticking with um, whatever comes up and, and, and working with that energy and, and using that energy in a way that it helps propel you forward rather than holding you back. Mm. You, you talk about um, daemons uh, and, and in fact, the tagline of your book is face your daemons and dance. Are those like demons? What does it mean? I'm, I'm so glad you asked because I took a real leap of faith in incorporating the concept of the daemon into the title um, I mean, on a very, you know, um, simple level, I love alliteration and I, uh, that's the, the poetry, um, the poetic sound of, of, of phrasing. I really love the alliteration there of dancing with your demons, but it goes a lot deeper than that too. Um, the daemon, a lot of people have asked me why I spelled it D-A-I-M-O-N-S for daemons. And it's because if you go back to the ancient Greeks, uh, the original concept of the daemon was not what we think of today um, with the demon. It, it was quite a different concept. And uh, it was the, more the idea of a guardian angel, a ministering spirit um, that would actually help to reveal your inner genius to you. Um, in fact, uh, I've learned through my research that uh, there were hero uh, shrines built to heroes um, uh, Basically, there was an honoring of the daemon. So, um, you know, particular heroes that became heroes and and succeeded through their hero's journey had an actual uh, shrine built in honor of their daemon because the daemon was the force that a- allowed them to grow and transform themselves and and break through their barriers and, and move beyond their obstacles. So I really loved the concept. And then Carl Gustav Jung, um, later on, he really explored that concept a lot too. And one of the um, aspects that I love about the daemon is that it's both personal and impersonal. It's it's not anthropomorphic. It's it's um, transcendent. It's this idea of there is a force inside of you that it's that little nudge that we all get, you know, and it nudges us out of our comfort zone. And we kind of sort of say, oh, isn't that nice, and pat it on the head and keep moving, but it never leaves us alone until we honor it. But in order to honor it, we kind of have to, we don't know where it's going to lead us. But, in, but again, it's connected to our higher self and our divine connections, ultimately. It's, there's nothing sinister or evil about it. In its essence, it's really just our soul communicating to us to help us to grow. Now, a lot of people... Um nowadays are getting to a point in their lives where they they have it made and yet they're not happy they it, it's like this deep soul yearning for more and they don't quite know what the more is and i suspect that a big part of the more is some form of creative expression would you agree with that absolutely um i really i often had this thought that, you know, we've had a number of different, you know, paradigm shifts over the millennia. And uh, I keep feeling, and I mentioned this uh, later on in my book as well, too, that the next, when we look back, the next major revolution after the scientific revolution will be a creative revolution. Because, and I see so many signs of it now. Um, I think there's this idea that in essence, we're all creators. Um, we, we come from love, divine love. And, um, I, re- I remember coming across, um, uh, um, 
um, um, something, a reference to uh, the Mayans and uh, this idea that, you know, we have two choices when confronted with a situation that doesn't bring us joy. We can either um, create or destroy. And I often think about that as a teacher as well, too, in terms of, um, you know, what uh, we're nurturing and nourishing in ourselves and in, in the next generation. This whole idea that if we're not happy with something and that makes us feel uncomfortable emotions and anger and we lash out because of it, we're destroying. But if we are actually, on the other hand, in touch with the fact that we can create and that we are um, at heart creators, then it opens up so many more possibilities. Life isn't happening to us. We are dancing with life. We are partnering with life and the energies that come at us are not necessarily good or bad. They're just forces. And when we can see them as just energy rather than totally as, you know, a concrete manifestation, then we can alter those energies by how we interact with them. Oh, very good. Very good. I love that. Yeah, so many people, um, particularly in Washington nowadays, um, are bent on destruction and on negativity and really are very challenged in the creative department as to coming up with creative solutions to really create the kind of nation we want to live in. But that's my little soapbox, so I will back mm -hmm. off of it. Um, but yes, creator, a uh, creator daemons and oh, I love it. So, um, you talk about the um, multidimensional self. Um, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm, I'm so glad you asked about that too because I, I've been interested in for a long time with the Reiki and, and various other pursuits, the divine connections, and this fact that we're more than just a physical being. And yet at the same time, I've had this, this real passion and love for dance since I was about three years old. And so it's a beautiful marriage and balancing of the two this, that, that sort of shaped itself over time and this realization that even though we have a physical vehicle that we inhabit, <laughs> ah. we are, um, as many people are talking about these days, um, we, form. we are spirit in form and we're going to have to pursue that a little further after our break. We are speaking with Polly Blanco, the author of in rhythm with your soul. We'll be right back. Conscious media for conscious minds. Ohm Times. Hey ladies, do you want to have that good hair day feeling all the time? Gentlemen, would you want your special someone to have that glow letting you know she is feeling completely satisfied? This feeling and that glow can be yours by embracing your sexual power. So join me, Rachel Kenley, award-winning romance author, on The O-Spot. The O-Spot will guide you to that peak with guest interviews, book discussions, and conversations on the thrills of sexual empowerment. Put the zing back in your life. Come up and see me sometime on The O-Spot, live on Hump Day at 10 p.m. Eastern. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.omtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Circle of Hearts Radio is a sanctuary on the airwaves. Join me, Grandmother Alaya, in the circle on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, as I share information to both enlighten and nourish your soul. Bringing a more conscious lifestyle to your world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. And we are back speaking with Polly Blanco. Polly, just before the break, you were talking about the multidimensional self as a spiritual self. Now, how does this awareness of self 
serve people on their creative journey? Well, I think one of the things that when we start to identify too much with the physical form, um, then we miss, I mean, it's a choice like anything else. And that's a choice some of us need to make at a certain uh, stage in the journey. And, and that's all good. However, at a certain point, um, I think what's really helpful in staying on that journey, that creative journey, is to recognize the other dimensions in which are, I want to almost say, interplaying with our energy uh, in the sense that, okay, we know we have um, emotions and feelings, so we've got the emotional body, we've got thoughts, we've got the mental body, and then we move into the spiritual body, and then on top of that we also have, I talk about the nine different dimensions. I was very inf- influenced by a book I read by Barbara Han Clow, and where she talks about the nine dimensions, and and it really got me thinking even further and going even deeper into this whole idea of how really, you know, if you're starting a creative pursuit that really and truly for everything to sort of start to um, come into alignment or to feel right, because it doesn't always feel right along the way. Um, it's because we're bumping up against sometimes these places where energy is stagnant or it's dormant.